knight and the captive maiden were married and lived happily ever after. Oh, wasn't he wonderful? Uh, gotta get it fixed. Gotta get it fixed. You gotta get what fixed, Mr. Edwards? Why, this dead blamed helmet. I... Oh, excuse me, Miss Geraldine. <laughs> That's interesting. Awful interesting. You know, the Black Knight looks something like you, Mr. Edwards, sort of there. <laughs> oh, I don't know as I'd go so far as to say that, hardly. Uh oh. oh. Ten o'clock. Latest I've kept you up in years. Goodness. I guess you forgot about 1935. You stayed till 12, remember? Oh, yeah. New Year's Eve. <laughs> yeah, I never got to bed till 12.15 that night. So you think I look like a knight, huh? Yes, Mr. <laughs> Edwards. Well, good night, Miss Geraldine. Oh, Mr. Edwards. Oh. You've been trying to go out that door for years. I know. <laughs> Silly, ain't it? <laughs> No, I can ride a horse all right, Miss Geraldine, but I don't know about one of them steeds. On the way home tonight, if you should meet a damsel in distress, I trust you'll draw your sword in her defense. Why, you bet your life I'll draw my sword in her defense. Mm -hmm. Saying that. How are you gonna help me be a hero just stand there saying oh? 
Oh, I see. You want me to help you make a hero out of yourself. What in the tarnation fur? Well, she was reading out of the book, Miss Geraldine. Tells all about them knights and maidens and all that stuff. And Well, I just thought maybe if I could make a hero out of myself, maybe, maybe I could get her to marry me. Now, Lance, Dad, blame you. <laughs> I know that I just can't help it, love. So after all these years, you're finally going to pop the question, huh? Well, she's a mighty fine little woman, Edna. Mighty fine little woman. Oh, yes, she's a fine woman, all right. Uh, whilst I don't think she's stout enough to do the milk and chop the wood, sit you there, a woman's work, but she is a fine woman. I thought there ought to be some way you could help me make a hero out of myself, instead of wasting your time swapping for these dead blame rabbits and that no-good dog wherever he's at. What's he chewing up now? Mom, I knowed you never liked him, so I got shut of him. Sold him this morning. Well, good for you. What'd you get for him? A hundred dollars. A hundred dollars for that dead blame dog? I done it. Where about is the money? Why, uh, back there in the shed. Back there in the shed? That's a fine place to leave a hundred dollars laying around. Come on, let's go get it. Well, now, wait a minute. Only good deal you've made in years, and you have to leave the money out here in the shed. Great. Wait a minute. What are these dogs doing in here? Huh? Where'd they come from? Oh, that's the hundred dollars, Long. Uh, a fifty-dollar mama dog and, and five ten-dollar pups. <laughs> For goodness sake. I ought to know there was a catch to it some way or other. Got shut of one dog and got sick and... <laughs> what was that? I never hear nothing. Sounded like a horse. A horse? Now, what would a horse be doing in here? I don't know, but I aim to find out. Uh-oh, here we go. Hi, right, Granny, if that ain't a horse, what is it? Huh? I don't see nothing. Well, open your eyes. Over here. Huh? Oh. My doggy, that does look something like a horse. Yes, sir, I believe you're right, Mom. That's what that is, sure as a world. A horse. Cedric Weehunt. Morning, Mr. Lum. What are you doing in there? Oh, I don't know. Mr. Abner just told me to stand here with the horse. Well, naturally, Lum, we had to have somebody to take care of the horse. You had met that yourself. One, two, goodness. Swap for a no-good horse like this and then hire somebody to take care of him. Grannies, I've got headaches enough without something like this. Here, I laid awake all night last night trying to figure out some way to make a hero out of myself. And you have to do this. Well, if that's all that's wrong with you, just a headache. I can cure that for you. All right, Grannies, wait a minute. What ain't we got today that we had yesterday? Uh huh? What did you swap for that horse? Oh, uh, uh... Well, now, Lum, you said yourself that old deliver car was just falling all to pieces. Deliver car? You mean you swapped it off for that horse? I must have. All right, Granny, you just take him back to wherever you got him and get our car back. Well, Lum, I don't believe them gypsies is coming back through here. Gypsies? All right, Granny, you follow them until you find them. Well, here, here, take that, Lum. That'll make you feel better. I know it will. Is that the water you've been giving the horse, Cedric? Yes, Mom. But he's had all he wants. It, go ahead and take it, Lom. Aunt Lom, if you'll just let me keep that horse now, I promise you I'll never make another trade as long as I live. Nothing doing? I'll do anything you want me to do. Anything if you let me keep him. Our right, Granny's, wait a minute. I'll let you keep him one way. What's that? If you'll promise to help me make a hero out of myself. Why, sure I will. Anything you want me to do. Our right, Granny's, put her there. <laughs> Well, when do we start? Well, let's go in the store and figure the thing out. Yeah. Uh, Cedric, you take good care of my horse for me now. Uh, Mr. Abner, do I have to stay with the horse all the time? I didn't get a wink of sleep last night. He snores. Oh, well, uh, make him sleep on his back, Cedric. That'll stop him. Yes, ma'am. Abner. Move, Long, if you're going to. I will. Don't rush me. Don't rush me. Abner. I got you cornered there where you go. Abner, are you going to get me that stack of flour, or ain't you? Ah, uh, been waiting for a half hour. Oh, uh, where plumb out of flour, Obadiah? Why don't you go over to Dick Huddleston's store there and get it? He keeps good flour. Yes, and I bet he wouldn't be too darn lazy to get it for me, neither. 
that doggie's had Obadiah's getting grouchy here lately. I don't believe that feller's well. What's the idea telling a cash customer we're out of flour? Well, Lom, if I got the flour for him, he'd wanted something else. He'll stand there and order stuff all day if he wants to get started. Move. Wait a minute, that's our ring, ain't it? I don't know. I never paid no attention. Move. Yeah, yeah, that's ours. I'd know that ring anywhere. I thought it was. Well, move one of them, Lom. Yeah, let's see. My granny's all put her stop to that ringing anyway. That's our time. Is this the John of Downstore? Uh-oh. Sounds like the waiter Abernathy. Move. Well, I will. Quick, I figure this thing out. You just get away from that checkerboard, Lom Edwards. Don't get hard. She ain't always playing checker. She can't see through that thing, too, can she? Hang it up. I will as quick as I move here. I want five pounds of apples. Good apples. We ain't got, we ain't got no apples. And I want some cheese about... Uh, no cheese. How can a feller concentrate on a checker game with that going on? Hang it up. Or to have the dead blame thing took out of here. Or not to ever let her put it in here to start with. That's what we ought to do. Hang it up, Take it out by... Wrong number. Wait a minute. Here comes Uncle Henry Lunsford. I expect I better get up and wait on him. Yeah, better, because he feels sort of embarrassed even coming in here owing us like he does. Well, he ought not to feel that way. Granny, he's had a lot of hard luck in his place this year. Yeah, don't mention the bill to him at all, Uncle. Um. Well, good morning, Uncle Henry. Morning, Lum. What can I do for you? I, I come to see you about that bill I owe you. Oh, well, uh, me and Abner just ain't got around to making them bills out here this yeah, month. Been owing it to you so long that oh, I... Oh, cut, cut, cut yeah. now. Uh, what was you needing? Well, been needing so many things that we're, we're plumb out of flour. Flour? Yeah. Grannies, we got plenty of it. Just got a fresh batch in day before yesterday. Uh, Lum! Get Uncle Henry to try out some of them potatoes there for us. Give him about a bushel of them. Oh, Lum, I, I don't want you to do that. Well, why don't you go get the wagon and drive around to the side door there and we'll load her up. You'll be wanting to get some feed anyway for the stock. If you insist. And, uh, here. Take these cookies to the youngins. I know they'll enjoy them. Oh, when those <laughs> youngins see these cookies, they'll be like a bunch of hogs under an acorn tree. Yes. <laughs> Abner. Huh? Come on up here and help me. Let's get a big basket of stuff for them. I know they'll plumb out of everything. Yeah, yeah, that's a good idea, Don. Wait a minute. Granny's here comes the widow Abernathy. <laughs> All full of love and matrimony as usual. <laughs> I ought to hide what I ought to do. No, sir, you stay here and wait on her. You're the one she's in love with. Morning, widow. Morning. <laughs> oh, there you are, Mr. Edwards. You were so busy when I called you. I thought I'd better bring in this order. Let me see. I want five pounds of potatoes. Oh, uh, the potatoes is in Abner's department. Uh, five pounds of potatoes, Abner. Five pounds of fudge. And a package of macaroni. Abner handles a macaroni, too. Package of macaroni, Abner. Macaroni, check. Perhaps it would be best, after all, if I just left this list with you and had you deliver it. In person, if you please. <laughs> Where are those children? Here we are. It's so hard for one little woman to cope with them. What they need is a good, strong father. Don't you think, Mr. Edwards? Uh, we'll get the groceries over there some way or other with her. Come, children. What them kids need is a good, strong right arm. He done it a purpose, too. Why, sure he did. I dog as I know that ain't my department. Go on, pick them up, Lum. All right, I'll straighten up the cans. Here, you fill out the grocery order. Yeah. Uh, hand me a sack of them potatoes as you go by there, Lum. I dog as that woman's going to get you yet, Lum. She's been trying to marry you for years. Not if I'm in my right mind, she won't. I just leave Mary a bunch of pies and ivy. <laughs> Let's see, macaroni, yeah. Uh, dog food. Two cans. Doggies, you must be going to have company. Dear me, 
Didn't she say something the other day long about her husband a-dying? Yeah, that's what she claims. I think she worried him to death. Down in Oklahoma, I believe she said it was. That's what it was, Tulsa, Oklahoma. That's where she said it. He might have just run off and left her. I know that's what I'd have did. Howdy, Mr. Long. Oh, hello, Cedric. Well, would you have an accident? Yeah, one went through here a few minutes ago. Come on, pitch in and help me straighten up these cans. Mom? Help me straighten up these tomatoes. Oh. Well, stack them up there yourself, Cedric. Mom? Never mind, I'll do it myself. That old woman can throw more stuff out the back door, and her two men can carry into the front to save her life. Yeah, it's looking all right, Cedric. Here you are, Long. What do you mean, here you are? The D-lever for the wet of Abernathy. Well, take it on over there, then. You was the one she wanted to bring it over. You was the one that swapped off the D-lever car. Now, well, Long, you said you wouldn't bring that up again. Go on, take them groceries over there. I'll take it over for you, Mr. Abner. No, you don't, Cedric. Make him do it. My granny's maybe to learn him to quit trading with everybody that wants to banner him. Go on, take him over there. Dad, blame it all. It's got to where all the work it did around this place. I had to do it. Well, that's... That gets you, Cedric. Looks all right, don't it? Uh-oh, there's one more there, Mr. Lubb. Oh, handy. Oh, well, I'll be dead blamed. Oh, I didn't aim to do that. I'm hungry. You're hungry? If you don't quit talking about eating, I'm going to take a bite out of you. Yeah. Hey, Nick, here comes a guy down the street and... He's got a basket of groceries. Scram. Uh, well, well, thank you very much, Doctor. You've opened up a new world for me. See if you can open up a can of sardines someplace. Well, good morning, good morning, good morning, sir. <laughs> morning. Doggy, that's pretty good to keep three of them things in there at once, you know what? Three? I was juggling six balls. Six? I never seen but three of them. Well, if you could only see three balls when I'm juggling six, there must be something wrong with your glasses. Let me send you a pair oh, of glasses. Oh, no, I ain't got no money to be buying nothing, no. Well, I'll, maybe we can make a trade. Huh? Trade? Yes. See, you don't need cash. We can trade the glasses for whatever you've got in there. What have you got there? Oh, get some groceries, potatoes and cookies and butter and ham and one thing or another. Yeah. <clears throat> now, you don't need cash, you see? We're going to make this trade. Well, I don't much believe I'd be interested in buying no glasses right at this time. I've got to study up some way or another to make a hero out of myself so as I can marry Miss Geraldine. Of course, you don't know what a hero is. I do, done it. I seen one at the Opry House. He saved a pretty lady. Saved her from what? A engine. What was he going to do, scalp her? No, a railroad engine. She was tied onto the tracks and he run and on tied her and... Well, what do you think she done? What'd she do? Kissing? Oh, sure, kissing it yourself. But it made a big hero out of him. Did, huh? Yes, Mom? Now, Granny's, wait a minute, Cedric. I believe you've given me an idea. Mom? How would you like for me to save you from a railroad engine? I don't think I'd like it. No, that's right. It ought to be somebody more important. Yes, Mom? Somebody like... like Abner. Mr. Peabody, take these glasses and put them in your pocket as a memento of an almost fatal mistake. And put on these glasses that are going to help you immeasurably. Won't you look across the street, please? Uh-huh. Oh. Doggy, what do we have in an earthquake? Earthquake? Let me see those. Oh, yes, I see. It needs a little crimpet. There we are. Now then, look right across the street again. I believe you better crimp them again. They still ain't just right. Oh, they're all right. You just read these large letters here. You're awful skinny, you know it. Oh, well, keep yourself in good shape. Good glasses will keep in shape. Well, these must be x-ray glasses. I can see every bone in your body. Every... Oh, <laughs> I beg your pardon. That's from the last town. There we are. Now, the test. Please read this letter. Uh, B. Very good. This. Oh. Very good. And this. Uh... P. Perfect. And this. That's another O, ain't it? That's fine. And here. 
Uh, why? Excellent. And this. They correct. A hundred percent correct as we say in the optical world. Got him right, did I? You certainly did. Well, good for me. What's that? Oh, oh, <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, the groceries, please, Mr. Peabody. Yeah. What fair, fair? Yes, sir. What is fair? Yeah, 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 yeah. There they are. This crowd I run into you for is too late. <laughs> well, much obliged, Doctor. Yes, Mr. Peabody, what a blessing is clear vision. Oh, excuse me, ma'am. Doggy, it must have rained last night. And we'll tie Abner to the railroad track, and just as the train gets right to him, I'll run up there and untie the ropes and save his life and make a heel. Wait a minute, here he comes now. Don't let on, Cedric, don't let on. <laughs> oh, you gentlemen been waited on? Wait a minute, Abner, what in the world's the matter with you? Huh? Is that you, Lord? Well, I'll be dead blamed. What's going on here? All right, Cedric, may as well start stacking them up again. Whoa. Oh. Wait a minute. Whereabouts did you get them spectacles? From a fella right over on the corner. Swan to goodness. You needed new glasses about like we needed that horse you swapped for. He, he, he gave me an examination and I passed it long, and, and he let me have a pair. I, I was needing them awful bad. He said so himself. Whereabouts is the basket? Huh? You swapped the Witter Abernathy's groceries for them things. Well, well, it ain't every day a fella gets a chance to be fitted by an expert this way. Whereabouts is he at now? Right over there. All right, Granny, give me them things. Wait a minute, what you fixing to do, Long? I'm going to make him give us them groceries back. Now, wait a minute. And I'm going to run him out of town so fast he'll set the woods on fire. Come on, Cedric, I might need your help. So me that's a fine how do. A fine how do you do, I must say. Oh. Tomatoes and off them. No, I believe I've bit off more than I chew you rabbits. Got me building pens night and day. Uh-oh, there comes Mr. Pine Ridge. Well, good morning, Abner. How are you this fine day? He's up to something. Morning, Squire. You just thought I'd drop by and leave this grocery order to be filled. Well, well, much obliged to you. No, not at all, not at all. I hear you and Lum bought a horse. Well, we didn't exactly buy him, but we got one. Mm, race horse, is it? Oh, I don't know, Ferg. I know it's just a horse. I might take a look at him and let you know what kind of a deal you made. Why, sure. Be proud to get your opinions on him. He's back here in the shed. Come on back. Oh, you have him here, eh? Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't want to buy some rabbits cheap, would you, Spar? <laughs> no, no. I just had two when I started. <laughs> yes, sir, I believe I made a good... Well, Cedric tied him up out here. Oh, boy. There he is, Squire. Look him over. Stands as square on his feet as a cook stove. Ain't got a spur spavin on him nowhere that I could find. Broad through the chest of the white oak stump. Got a good look out of his eye. How old you say he is, Squire? I'm afraid I couldn't tell you, Peabody. Somebody's been doing a pretty good job of teeth filing there. They have, huh? Oh, he's practically worthless. You could be wrong about that, you know, Uncle. What are you doing here? Oh, howdy, Margie. Hello, Abby. I just dropped in accidentally, same as you did. He looks to me like he's got some pretty good points. I repeat, he's worthless. Uh, someone was telling me you were thinking about entering him in the county sweepstakes at the fair next week. But after looking him over, it's my opinion, Abner. You're too smart to try to race him against a horse like my brown best. Well, I weren't picking on entering him. Oh, uh, well, you can't tell about a horse that way, Squire. You try him. Oh, nonsense. His uh, confirmation is all wrong. Uh, what's his name? Well, I was sort of thinking a while ago, uh, Lom went so high when I swapped for him, I might just call him Skyrocket. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't he look to you, Uncle, as if he might have been foaled at the Frank Williams place near Hot Springs? Oh, ridiculous. 
Why, that William Stark is a fine stain of horse flesh. Why, that critter can't run a lick. I'd like to ride him sometime, Abner, and see if he has any spirit. And the squire, being a sportsman, wouldn't want you and Lum to pass up a good bet, I'm sure. No, no, certainly not, certainly not. But you're just wasting your time. Uh-oh, there comes Lum. I hope he never hurt that fella when he run him out of town. Did you have to fist fight him, Lum? No, uh, take off them glasses and put them in your pocket or throw them away or something before they ruin your eyes. Oh. Uh -huh. Here. Oh, what's the matter? Wouldn't he take them back? Well, you can't expect them to work right off the bat, Abner. You've got to let them get used to your eyes. He said to crimp them. Oh, well. Uh, here, here, Lum. Here's an order for Squire Skimp. If you put it up, I'll deliver it over there. Yeah. Potatoes, onions, sugar, beets. Wait a minute. Here. Huh. Oh, you got a pair, too, huh? Yeah, I had to get them, Abner. I had to get them. Well, I never knowed your eyes would give me trouble. Oh, yeah. He says that might be what's been causing my asthma. Well. Granny, you don't have to write so big. I ain't hard to hear him. Potatoes. Uh-oh, customer. Huh? Oh, come in, Cedric. Mom? Oh, there you are, way over yonder. What's the matter to him? Well, I believe Cedric bought some glasses, too. Count, Cedric, don't run over a fella. Mr. Long! Where are you, Mr. Long? Here we are, Cedric, right here. Oh, here, here, here we are. Mr. Long, you got the longest arm I ever seen. Where'd you get them spectacles? The eye doctor. Uh, he said I look more extinguished looking with them on. Well. Hey, uh, Granny, that's the biggest horse I ever seen in my life. Where? Right up this way. Look out, you run over. Oh, that's Marge in Skyrocket. You're a good boy, Skyrocket. Good boy. <laughs> oh, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> well, what about him, Marjorie? If you say enter him in the county sweepstakes, he goes. Yes, sir, you're the boss. I'd like one or two more days before I give you a definite answer. Well, uh, what's the matter? Ain't he fast enough? Is that what you mean? No. As a matter of fact, I think he's about two seconds to the mile faster than Brown Bess. Well, what are we waiting for, then? I uh, grannies, I can't hardly wait to see the expression on the squire's face whenever he has to hand that cup over to us. <laughs> <laughs> but it isn't that easy. I hate to tell you this, but I'm afraid the horse is a balker. He's a what? Mm-hmm. He won't start. Look, I'll show you. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Well, didn't them gypsies tell you that whenever you traded for him? No. Well, now, come to think of it, I believe they did say that sometimes he stood awful quiet. Pick up that rope, Lum, and stretch it straight across the road. Huh? Oh. Well, no wonder he balks, Margie, if he's got to jump a rope to get started. Well, let's try him. All right, let's go. One, two... Three! Go! Doggies, he's out of sight already! Where'd he go? He never went. Uh, oh. Oh. See, I told you he was a balker. I've tried every trick I've ever heard of to get him started. And sometimes he'll go and sometimes he won't. he looked pretty foolish if he refused to break at the county sweepstakes. Yeah. Squire'd have the laugh on us then, wouldn't he? <laughs> That's what I'm afraid of. The horse is getting better, I think. But if Cedric's going to ride him, he better start working with him so Skyrocket can get used to him. You know how bound you Abner could ride him? He used to be quite a rider when he's a young fella. Oh, well, um, I ain't been on a horse in 30 years. Well, you ain't scared of him, are you? Why, of course not. I can ride any horse that ever peeped through a bridle. Well, get on him then. See what you can do with him. Whoa, oh, whoa, oh, boy. Hey, hey, boy. Yeah. Oh, 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 boy. Well, <laughs> how are you getting on with Man of War? <laughs> We're getting on fine. We think we 
you'll have a racehorse one of these days. Uh, someone was telling me he don't break very well. I hope he ain't uh, a balker. Squire <laughs> Skimp, have you been snooping on me? No, 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 certainly not. But I uh, heard a few rumors. <laughs> Take him down the road, Abner, and let him out a little. Well, don't you want to put the rope up first? Oh, sure, sure, sure. Put up the rope. Let, let's see him start. <laughs> if he will start. Well, he'll start all right. Come on, I'll put her up. One, two, three, go. Look out, here it comes. Oh, Scott Rocket, let's go. Come on, boy, let's go. Get up there, get up. Don't you do stand quiet, don't you? Come on, let's go, Scott Rocket. <laughs> All right, Granny, she's a powerful runner once she gets started. Yes, sir. One rabbit power. <laughs> Wait a minute. <clears throat> so this is how you've been snooping on us. <clears throat> Good day, Lum. Well, I'd still like to know where we're going, Mom. Be quiet, Abner. I reckon this is fur enough, ain't it, Cedric? Bob. Oh, just Bob. What are we doing down here on a railroad track, Lum? <laughs> are we going to hop a freight and run away from home? Of course not. Oh. Uh, well, 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 what are we going to do? You said if I come down here, you you had a surprise for me. Now, what is it? Well, before I tell you, I expect we better tie him up, haven't we, Cedric? Just both. You can tie his hands and feet there, Cedric. <laughs> you got to tie me up first, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good for me. I love surprise. I just love them. Hurry up, Cedric. Well, now, you've been uh, promising to help me make a hero out of myself if I'd let you keep that horse. I'll do it. I'll do it too long. All right. This is your chance to play ball with me. Well, good. Play ball? Is that what the surprise is, a new bit? Oh, not baseball, Abner. Well, Lom, I'm getting too old to play football, if that's what you're talking about. Time tight there, Cedric. Yes, ball. Yeah, I don't know what the game is, Cedric, but time is tight. I don't want to cheat. Now, now, what is it, Lon, we're going to play? Well, we're going to tie you across the railroad track here. Oh, good. And when the train gets about, oh, 100 yards from us here, I'll run up the track here. Cedric and I'll hide out the side there, see? And we'll run up the track here, and I'll untie you and save your life and make a hero out of me. Well, <laughs> uh, what train? Why, the Fast Express. Fast e Oh, no, you don't. Wait a minute, oh, no. come back. Oh, wait a minute, Cedric. Oh, wait a minute, Cedric. Wait a minute, I'm here. Oh, Blame it all. Oh, don't now. Help. Now help me, Cedric. Help me. Oh, don't now, Lon. Now wait a minute. Now, Lon, let's talk this thing over now, Lon. Honest now. Ain't nothing Lom. to talk over. We done tried that. Dad, blame it all. Cedric, I'm going to have you arrested for this. Don't do pay no attention to him, Cedric. No, Cedric. That tickles my feet. Don't do that, Cedric. Tell. Tell. Shut up. Somebody might hear you. Well, that's the reason I'm hollering help. So they will. Now, Lon, Lon, let's You got him, Cedric? Dad, blame it all. I'd order to hold him. Now, don't worry a bit, Abner. I'll be right back to rescue you as quick as the train comes. Cedric, you sit here behind this bush, Cedric, Cedric so nobody can see you. Yes, Bob. Hi, Granny. This is going to make the biggest the hero out of me Pine Ridge has ever seen. It is, huh? Help, oh, yeah. Help, Granny, it's worth every cent I'm paying you to help me, Cedric. Well, when am I going to get the 50 cents? Well, we'll get around to that later. Help. Cedric, don't leave me, Cedric. Can't blame it all. Granny, I hope oh. they stop the train and all the customers get out and shake hands with me. <laughs> Maybe the engineer will get me to sit up there in the engine with him and ride me clear into the county seat. Can't blame it, Lum. Come up here. Mr. Lum, the train sound like it's getting awful near. Oh, no, we got plenty of time, Cedric. See, the closer it gets to Abner, the bigger hero it'll make out of me. Lum! Hurry up, Lum! There comes the train, Lum! Hurry up! Yes, Mom, but it, it's getting awful close. Oh, Mr. Lump, you better get on up there. Well, you stay right here, Cedric. Help, help. Blame it all up. That's the greatest idea I ever had in my life, Abner. <laughs> this ought to make a hero out of me. Get me loose. Oh, I got plenty of time. Hurry up, Lum. Hurry up, Lum. Granny, Cedric's got these side in a hard knock. I wish I'd never hear to that. Oh, my goodness. Well, stop the train. Wait a minute. Lump. Hold it back. Lump. Hold it. Get up, loose, Lum. Wait a minute! Oh, oh. My dog is in oh, I reckon Mr. Lum's a hero now, ain't he? I'd rather not discuss it, Cedric. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 
Hey, Dogie, if you get any higher, I'm going to have to get a ladder. I'll plumb up on everything he is in the store. No, as I was saying, Mr. Dillbeck, if that lung keeps up this hero business of his, somebody's going to get hurt around here. And I think I know who it is, too. Oh, I don't believe I'd say that, Abner. Well, don't come slipping up on a fella early in the morning this way. You scare the daylights out of me. Abner, I've got a great idea. I don't want to hear it. Oh, but this is a good one. You're going to be kidnapped. Think of that. I am thinking, and I still don't like it. It's going to be a secret. Well, just keep it a secret from me, then. Well, wait a minute. What about that promise of yours? I don't recollect no promise. You mean to say you don't recollect promising to help me make a hero out of myself? I never promised to put up with the kind of foolishness you got me into yesterday. Well, now, wait a minute. No, sir, wait no, just a minute. I Let me explain it to you. It. Ain't no use arguing about it, Lum. You're just wasting your time now. Well, wait a minute, Abner. I don't much blame you. That railroad business never worked out very good for some reason or other, but this is different. Now, tonight, I'll get a ladder, and I'll come over to your house and get you out of the bedroom window. You have to make out like you got a headache or something and go to bed early so your woman Elizabeth won't think anything about it. And we'll take you over to that hill back Uncle Henry Lunsford's place and pick out a nice spot and tie you to a tree. I'll just stay there till I starve to death, huh? No, no, we're going to put a note on the front door there saying you're being held for a thousand dollar ransom. A thousand dollars? For me? Ha, <laughs> ha, doggies. See how important you're going to be? Yeah, but now, how do I get loose? Well, I'm coming to that. Now, tomorrow morning, right early, I'll go down to that hobo camp down there on the river, and I'll get a couple of them tramps, pick out a couple of the meanest looking fellers. Of course, I'll have to pay them about five dollars apiece. And they turn me loose. No, no, they're, they're going to stand guard over you. They're the kidnappers. Oh. So after the posse forms, I'll sort of lead them up to the right spot, and then I'll come charging up the hill of firing my six-shooter. <laughs> you needn't go on a farther long. Why not? I saw you shoot that pistol. Ain't a thing you're doing. Oh, well, these are going to be blank cartridges, silly. Oh, oh. But the hobos will make out like they're real bullets, and they'll just run like all get out. And right in front of the posse, I'll come running up the hill and untie you. <laughs> Grannies, if that don't make a hero out of me, my name ain't Lum Eddard. <laughs> well, it sounds like a pretty good idea, all right, Lum, but I believe I better think it over for a week or two. No, sir, we've got to strike while the iron's hot. Yeah, we're going... Uh, huh? Huh. Yeah, what did you say about heating up the iron? I say we've got to strike while the iron's hot. That's an old Eddard saying of mine. Well, what kind of iron? A flat iron like Elizabeth uses to iron with? Any kind of iron, hot or cold, we've got to strike tonight. Well, you better make it a cold and I'll tell you that. If you think I'm going to set up on top of that hill, hold a red-hot iron waiting for you to come after me, you got another guess to come. Well, forget about the iron. Tonight's the night. Don't you recollect? The kidnapping. Oh, I've changed my mind about that, Lump. No, you ain't either. Get out of that bed or I'll come in there and get you. Uh, now, Lump, don't argue now. Don't argue. Get out of there, then. Hurry I'm, up. I'm getting, I'm getting. Be right. quiet before you wake up the whole household. Come around here at this hour of the night. Let me... Oh, my goodness, hurry up, Andrew. Goodness gracious, hold on. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, let me get my breakfast on. Be quiet. Kidnapping. Make a hero out of yourself. Don't get out. I wish I'd never hear of Wait a minute, I'll give you a light here, Long. Don't wait. Wait, 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 wait a minute. That's Elizabeth's prize lamp left to her by her mama, too. Don't be this a fine time of night to be getting a man out for something like this. Come on and shut up. Or they had more sense than to listen to you in the first place. Get up out of bed all hours and I'd be quiet. <laughs> Oh, that tickle, no. Quiet. Don't tickle my foot. Tender foot. All that happens. Oh, Granny, that didn't break my back. It's a mercy. It ain't my back that's hurting me. Well, come on, let's get out of here. We'll just leave that ladder there for evidence. Come on. Oh, oh, Lum, he's lost it. 
Right, you'll wake up the whole neighborhood. These rocks has hurt my feet, Mom. You're going to have to carry me. Oh, for goodness sakes, for two cents, I'd give this whole thing up. I don't think that's a deal. What are you doing? Oh, ain't got less than a nickel. Oh, for goodness sake, get on, get aboard. Oh. You better get off now, Abner. I gotta put that ransom note on the door. This is fun riding piggyback, you know. It's <laughs> allowed. You wake up the whole town. Oh. Thousand wonders we got out of the house without waking Elizabeth up. Elizabeth? Why, she weren't there. Weren't there? No, Grandma Masters is sick, so she went over to set up with her. Well, this is a fine time to be telling me about it. We could have walked right out the front door. I never thought about that. Got Abner. If he's worth a thousand dollars, you better get it ready. If he ain't, we'll send in his ears one at a time, more later. The red circle gang. Abner's been kidnapped. Hold for ransom. They're bombing a posse now. Get the boys and cover running. you think they came this way? Well, I just figured it out, sir. I just figured if I was a kidnapper, whereabouts would I take him? Well, sounds like good reasoning to me. All right, men, follow along. Yeah, follow me. Oh, for the land's sake, did you hurt yourself? <clears throat> well, you fellas has got this all wrong. It, it was just a joke. Well, the joke ain't gonna work, chum. See, me and my partner, we was going to make out like I was kidnapped, and then he's going to rescue me, and that'll make a hero out of him, and he'll get to marry Miss Charity. Oh, cut the comedy. We came by the store and seen the ransom note. That, that was for the joke, too. He was going to give us ten bucks and shake somebody down for a grand. Well, if anybody's going to get it, we're going to get the grand. Well, we wasn't going to get no grand pine, or it, it was a thousand dollars. They'll be here in just a little while. Who'll be here? the posse and my partner to rescue me. There ain't gonna be no rescue, mister. Not till we've had time to collect. And if that silly-looking partner of yours wants to get tough about it, we'll fill him full of holes. Oh, there ain't there nothing I can do to make you fellers believe me. Well, we believe you. And we're gonna be all nice little pals together just as soon as we cut up that dough. Why, you low-down snake in the wheat? Hey, Butch, there's a bunch of roots milling around down here. That's them, that's them. They've come for me. Good for them. Who they? Who... Keep your mouth shut, you little runner. I'll shut it for you. You and who else? Help! I help. said keep your mouth shut. Help! Help! Uh, uh, just a minute, man. Can't be more than nine or ten of them up there. I'll handle this by myself. But, Lum, you can't... No, help. no, I don't want none of you fellas to get hurt. But if I have any trouble, you fellas come and help me out. And come a-shooting. Hey, here comes the other guy. Let's get over behind the tree and give him a warning to keep away. Hey, Lom, don't come up here, they'll kill you. That guy's so dummy, don't believe his own partner. Better warn him off. <laughs> Tell him to keep shooting, Abner. That's going to sound good from down there below. <laughs> Lom, don't come up here. Stay back, Lom, they'll kill you. Lom, stay back. They're right over there by that tree. He didn't say nothing about shooting. That thing looks like a young cannon. Hey, better not fire, man. You're liable to hit Lom. Lom, don't come up here. Get back, Lom. They're right over there, Lom. They're, they're right over there. Just stay where you are. I'm going to get you. Them bullets as big as marbles. That guy must be crazy. He's asking for it. Let him have it. Get on back, Lom. Get back. The crazy rube got me. I'm getting out of here. That guy don't know when he's licked. Come on. All right, man. These men have break cover. Nice work, Abner. I told you it'd work out just like we planned it. Yeah, you told me. That's a good idea having them fellas shooting blanks, too. Did you tell them to do that? 
Plum, them weren't blanks. They was using real bullets. They was going to hold me here till you paid them a $1,000 ransom. Oh, you're just joking, Abner. You're just saying that to get even with me on account of that railroad business, I know. Just saying it, huh? If you think them weren't real bullets they was using, take a look at your hat there. Huh? Take a look at your hat there. Oh, my goodness. Is he wounded, Abner? No, just shell shocked, I reckon. On time, he said, Rickman. Pick up his feet. We gotta carry him in. Mog. On time, he. Oh. All the crazy, idiotic stunts I ever heard of in my life, this one takes surprise. Oh. Uh, now, is he a hero, Mr. Abner? I hope so, for one of us gets killed. You sure I can't deliver these groceries for you, Miss Geraldine? Oh, no, thank you. And I'd like to tell you again how much I admired your conduct yesterday. It, it was nightly, Mr. Edwards. <laughs> Worth nothing much, hardly, to speak of. A and I'd like to ask a very great favor of you, Mr. Edwards. Why, sure. What is it? Well, I wonder if I could have your hat, the one with the bullet hole in it. I, I should like to preserve it. Why, of course you can have it. I can't wear it no more, no way. Oh, well, do come and see me. You don't have to wait for the usual Wednesday night, do you? Uh, no, I don't reckon I do. Uh, I'll, I'll come by tonight and set a spell. That is, if it's all right with you. And I'll bring the hat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, au revoir, Mr. Edwards. Au <laughs> revoir. Goodbye, Miss Geraldine. Granny's, it's a fine morning. Mighty funny when the feller don't know when he's well off and goes and sticks his head into matrimony, ain't it? Have you popped the question yet, love? Well, that's the part that's got me stuck. He can dodge bullets, and yet he's afraid to ask a lady to marry him. Well, <laughs> he might be right about that, Margie. That getting married is awful dangerous business nowadays. Yeah. Uh, uh, how skyrocket, Margie? Oh, that's what I came to tell you. I added him in the county sweepstakes today in your name. Well, good for you. <laughs> Won't old Squire Frost at the mouth. <laughs> you sure Cedric ain't going to be too heavy for him? I don't think so. He ran a mile in 142 this morning with Cedric up. 142? Doggy, that's faster than Brown Bess ever on it. Why, sure. Is he still walking? Oh, once in a while. But he's getting used to Cedric, and I think he'll start all right. Isn't that your ring? I don't know. I never paid no attention. Of course it was. Go on, answer the phone. What you waiting on? I'm looking for my spectacles. <laughs> They're right on your forehead. <laughs> <laughs> don't need glasses to answer the telephone, no way. Got to see who I'm talking to, don't I? Hello? Hello? I know this. Must have hung up. Hey, what's going on here? What's that, a grocery order, Law? No, I want to read you something. Now, no laughing. This is serious business. It wouldn't be a proposal, would it? How'd you know that? Uh, listen to this, see how you like it. Is this exaggerate? My love for you is strong and true. It'll last as long as the skies are blue. <laughs> will you be kind and share my life? In short, will you become my wife? Signed, Lum Edwards, proprietor of the Jot 'em Down store, Pine Ridge, Arkansas. <laughs> Why, Lum, that's very sweet. Did you like it, sure enough? Hey, Granny's, I sat up all night last night writing it. But the question is, how am I going to get it to her? Well, why don't you go out and hand it to her yourself? And stand there and watch her read it? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Well, then why not to... Don't be looking at me. I ain't no Cupid. Uh, wait a minute, Abner, wait a minute. Uh, ain't no use to argue with me now, Lum. I ain't going to do it well, now. Wait a minute, Abner. Granny's, after all I've did for you, 
set up with you when you had the mumps, lent you money when you was a needin'. Why, Abner Peabody, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. All right, Dad, blame it. I'll hand it to her. Give it to me. Well, wait a minute. Let's see if she's gone home yet. She may still be down on the street. Oh, yeah. Hey, dog, I got to get that hole fixed. <laughs> By the way, how are the new glasses standing out? Oh, I think we're getting used to them, sort of gradual. <laughs> Yeah, we, our eyes have been burning. We've been having some awful bad headaches, but that just shows how bad we was needing them. Yeah, I believe eventually I can see Mike and I as good with these as I did with my old ones. Wait a minute, Abner. Yonder's Miss Geraldine now. Where? Standing right out there. Or over in front of the millinery store. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I see her. Yeah. Here, take this note on over there and give it to her right now. Well, now, what you want me to tell her? Why, well, just... Tell her it's with the compliments of Mr. Edwards. Yeah, yeah, all right. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, 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 boy. Oh. Well, he'll deliver the note all right. Here, I expect I better get back in the store. I don't want Miss Geraldine to see me stand out here watching. Good morning, Geraldine. Oh, I forgot something. Mom! Huh? Look who's standing there now where Miss Geraldine was. Oh, my goodness. Well, she'll be back out. To... You don't reckon Abner... With those glasses on? Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute, Abner! 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 Oh, wait a minute, Abner. I got something here for you. He said to tell you with the compliments of Lom Eddie. Now, don't say a word till you read it. Abner! 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 Wait a minute, wait a minute. Give me that note. No, I'm darling, you've made me the happiest woman in the world. All right, doggies, how did this happen? <laughs> you crazy. Look, look, Donovan, Grannies, this will settle any arguments about where the middle of the store's at. Mom, do we have to go through all this again just on account of a little bad eyesight? I'd rather not discuss it with you, Mr. Peabody. You ruined my life, that's what you did. Ruined my life. Well, I never know. I've got my half the dry goods on this side of the store, and you've got your half the groceries over there. The store's equal divided now, and I'll appreciate it if you'll stay on your own side. Uh-oh. Right over this way, Peabody sells it for less. Headers for better merchandise. Bananas, 25 cents a dozen. Two dozen per quarter. Three dozen per quarter. Four dozen. Five dozen. Wait a minute, Wait a minute. I don't want any bananas. So you divided the store again, have you? Yes, sir. Divide her up, Judge. Well, I've come to see Lum, so I might as well get on his side of the store. How long is this feud going to last, Lum? Uh, Granny's hit final this time, Judge. Yeah. I ain't having no more dealings with him. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Because what I've got to say to you isn't going to make you feel any better. It ain't, huh? I'm afraid the widow's got a mighty strong breach of promise case against you. Wait a minute. Come over here, Judge. He's got ears like a donkey. My doggy, that's a heap better than being one. I'm afraid if you don't marry her, she can take everything you've got. Granny, ain't there no way out of it at all, Judge. There's one chance. That is, she'll give us back that note. That's the only evidence she has against you. See if you can't get that note back, Judge. I'm going down to see her now. But you know the widow better than I do. Hello, Judge Jenkins. Hello, Marjorie. Right over this way. Lowest prices in town. Right over this way. Oh, come in, Marjorie. Grannies, I'm glad you come in. What's the matter, love? Oh, I just had a talk with Judge Jenkins. He says the widow Abernathy's got an awful good breach of promise case against me. Lum, Edward, you need a guardian. And you know whose fault it was. Lum, Edward, give me those glasses. Wait a minute. What are you going to do with them? I'll show you. Come on over here in the goods store, Margie. Give me these new glasses, Edward. Well, wait a minute. I'm just getting used to them. Come on. There's nothing wrong with your old ones. Well, now, be careful with them. I'll be careful, all right. You two getting enough trouble without having these glasses to help you. Why, that's willful destruction of property. I know it is. Well, oh... Right over this way, Squire. Lowest price in town. Don't go over there to get skin, Squire. Come over here. Now you two stop this right now, do you hear? Oh, fiddle-faddle. Oh, 
groceries half priced over here, Squire. <laughs> it looks like I might make some right smart bargains here today. Yeah, what can I do? Yeah, but that ain't what's on my mind, Lum. I'm representing the widow Abernathy and uh, and that little matter of your contract of matrimony. Well, what are you doing sticking your nose in this? You ain't no lawyer. Nevertheless, uh, the widow Abernathy has asked me to represent her interest. I don't want to marry her, though. The whole thing's a mistake. You Squire. will marry Mrs. Abernathy on Saturday night or take the consequences. <laughs> and that'll be two decisions you lose on Saturday. What do you mean by that? When Brown Bess beats that nag of yours, you will realize what a fool you were entering them in the county sweepstakes. I wouldn't be too sure of that, Uncle. He's a balker. He'll never get off of the starting line. Oh, he'll start all right. Eh, finally, you are training a horse to beat Brown Bess. What do you know about horses, anyway? Uh, she knows a heap more than you do, Squire. I, Granny's, I'll back her judgment again yarn any day. You will, eh? How much will you back it for? Well... You're not going to bet, are you, Mom? Eh. Just as a thought. You're full of big talk, but when it comes right down to backing your horse, you're... So that's what you come over here for, huh? All is looking for a sure thing, ain't you? Well, you ain't got one this time. i tell you what I'll do, Squire. If you really want to bet, I'll bet you my half the store here again $1,000 that Skyrocket beats Brown Bess. Lum, you wouldn't do that. Keep still. And you bet, Edward. Shake on it. Don't do it, Lum. <laughs> when this half of the store is mine... I can fix it up and make something out of this hodgepodge. Just a minute, Squire. You're so all far smart and appear to think so much of that dad blamed hay burner of yours. How would you like to make a real bet on that race? What do you mean, a real bet? I'll bet you my half of the store. Again, you sending Margie to that art institution she's been wanting to go to. You were bluffing, Peabody. You think I won't call you, but here's where you lose. I'll take that little bet, too. My dog is you made a deal. Well, good day, gentlemen. <laughs> Have the keys ready. I'll be in to take possession on Monday morning. <laughs> good for you. Oh. Well, now you've done it. I declare I think you're both crazy. Of course we're crazy. You got no business associating with us, no way. Why don't you go on away and leave us alone? Well, love. Well, for once, I think he's right. What do you hang around down here for? Why don't you go on home and cramp yourself up and get you a bow like a young girl or two? I've got a bow, Abner. I've got two of them, and I think they're both pretty grand. But if you two think you can get rid of me as easy as this, it's because my uncle got mad at me. And you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Oh, Abner ain't ashamed of nothing. He ain't got sense enough. Just cause I get mad and make a silly bet, he thinks he's got to do the same thing. You think you're the only one that can stand up to Squire Skimp, huh? I think you were both pretty grand. Didn't make sense, but I was proud of you. My granny's Abner did call the Squire's bluff, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> well, if anybody around here is gonna pick on Lom, it's gonna be me. Not Squire Skimp. Hooray for the three musketeers. All right, Granny, let's get this rope out of the way. Body can't get from one side of the store to the other. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, more than likely we won't have a store after Saturday, no way. Might as well be partners as long as we can. <laughs> this way, folks, and solve the secret of that crystal maze. <laughs> Hello, Cedric, my boy. <laughs> Why don't you go in and see the show? <laughs> I ain't got no money. Oh, well, I think that could be remedied. <laughs> uh, here you are, my son. <laughs> uh, do you reckon I'll have time? Why, of course, my boy. It's an hour yet before post time. <laughs> Much obliged, boy. <laughs> it's all right, Cedric. All right, right this way, folks. All right, step this way. One dime, ten cents, a tenth part of a dollar. What you looking so digested about, Skyrocket? Grannies, I wish there's some way I could tell him what he's carrying on his back today. Well, I don't see why you can't. Brown Beth always understood me. Well, why don't we go talk to her, then? What are we waiting on? <laughs> Listen, Bessie, do you think there's some way that you could manage to fall down or something without hurting yourself? Your mistress would appreciate it if you could. I reckon you're out of luck today, Miss Marjorie. She sure isn't a fine fellow. 
And she zoomed the pink. Reckon where Cedric's at. How much more time we got? Mm, almost an hour. You ain't saw him, have you, Squire? Yeah, he was over that way a little while ago. Well, it's a good thing we put Abner's name down as alternate writer in the entry blank. Well, that's the trouble. Abner ain't here neither. Granny, he ought to left Pine Ridge two hours ago. I'm afraid Mr. Peabody is temporarily detained. I find that Skyrocket did come from the Williams stock farm. Those gypsies stole him. And, of course, when they were looking for him, they had to take action when they found him in Abner's position. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Well, I might have known you'd figure out some way to horn Swagglers. You put Abner in jail. And I'll bet you done something with Cedric, too, so he couldn't get here. Well, I'll uh, maybe better go after Abner. He didn't talk the sheriff into letting him out somehow. Well, Sheriff, I told you a thousand or a hundred times I ain't guilty. Well, maybe so. You know, Abner, I'm kind of sorry to see you in here, even if you didn't vote for me. I voted for you. I might have put it in the wrong box, but I voted for you. Now, now, can I get out? Well, if you voted for me, you want to see me do my duty, don't you? Yeah, I reckon I do, Sheriff. Yeah, yeah, I do. Hey, Sheriff, when are you going to let us out of here? Oh, in a week or two, maybe. Hobos ain't so popular in these parts. Well, here, Sheriff, you ain't going to leave me back here by myself, are you? Yeah. Hey, Bill, that sheriff wouldn't rest so easy if he knew how bad we was wanted in a couple of places, huh? Which bank job are you referring to, Joe? Well, let's see. There's that hundred grand to be knocked off in St. Louis. How about That's... those bonds in KC? Oh, well, could I help that? That bank messenger had the nerve to walk right past me. Just like picking daisies. What they got you for, son? Playing hooky? Huh? Probably stole some kid's marbles. Hey, Dobie, you fellas don't know who you're talking to, do you? No. Horse thief Peabody is my name. I'm a horse thief, honest. I, I bet you I stole a, a thousand head of horses during my time. That's a pretty tough racket, old timer. Tough? That's the toughest deal in there is, bud. But I bet you're through now, ain't you? I ain't never gonna quit. Come here. Yeah? If I ever get out of here, I'm gonna steal sea biscuit. Me no. I'm gonna do it. Yes, sir. I I, I done a train job not long ago, too. Dream I, I sort of messed it up, but I done it. Uh, tell us some more about that horse stealing, mister. Oh, <laughs> well, uh, Weren't much to it. Uh, we used to steal them from the Indians. And, of course, we'd have to shoot about 15 or 20 braves every time we'd done it. And we'd take them down in Oklahoma and sell them. Oh. Clean profit. <laughs> so, yeah. I used to live in Tulsa. Did you ever operate down around there much? Tulsa, no. Yeah. No, I've heard of it, but we stayed out on the plains most of the time. Uh -huh. It's the Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah. Don't you seems like I used to know somebody that moved to Tulsa. Let me see now, who was that? Yeah, but we gotta get him out, Sheriff. I'm sorry, Lum, I can't do it. Unless you got $5,000 bail to put up. Well, can't I even see him? Why, sure. I'll bring him right out. Uh, wait a minute, here's your key, Sheriff. Oh. <laughs> I'm proud I'll run into you. My dog, that gives me a great idea. Wait a minute, wait a minute, I hear somebody coming. More like to that partner of mine. He, he's the one I was telling you about the kill setting bull. Lum wants to talk to you. Hey, Sheriff, when are you going to give me my shooting arms? I feel plumb undressed without them. What's the matter with you, Abner? Tell him how mean I am. You tell him. Oh, trying to make me talk, huh? <laughs> you fellas keep on practicing. Maybe someday you'll get as mean as me and get sent to the state penitentiary instead of a little old country jail like this. I'm glad we had these bars between us and him. Yeah. Tough character. For two cents, I'd have broke out of this bird cage. You know that, don't you, kid? Abner, you've got to ride Skyrocket. Skyrocket? Cedric ain't showed up yet. Mom, I can't be riding no horses. I'm too busy stealing them. Oh, for goodness sakes, cut out that foolishness now. If I don't get you back in time, Marjorie's going to lose her schooling, and me and you ain't going to have no store no more. Ah. Uh -huh. Sheriff, ain't there some way you could lend him to me for an hour or two? Sorry, I can't do her. It's against the law. No, I voted for him, Lom. He's got to do his duty. Come on, lock me up. Sheriff. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's that coming up out yonder? Where? Somebody after Abner, I'll balance you. No, I guess maybe it's my woman. There's the fire alarm. I gotta get going. Nobody. 
Well, wait a minute, Mom. I can't go with you. I've got to stay here in jail. I'm a desperado. Hurry up! Get drawn. Where to, Sheriff? To the fairground. Yeah, the fairground. Stop over the butcher shop and pick up Elmer and Oliver. Hurry up! Mr. Brannigan. I'm sure they'll be here any minute now. I insist that this race be started on time, Brannigan. There's the third round. I don't see no smoke. Oh, it's under the grandstand, I think, Chief. Under the grandstand. All right, boys, get ready. Wait a minute. Over here. I don't care about that. Where's the far? There ain't no far. What you told the far chief to was? Never mind that now. Come on. Get on this horse. Here he is, Mr. Brannigan. Come on, Amber. Get on there, quick. Oh, Dad, blame that Cedric Wee hunt. If I ever catch him, I'll whop him right on top of the head. Recollect you both got to come in together in order to win. There they go. Brown Bent is going to the front. Hezekiah is second. And there's Skyrocket, left at the post. He won't go, Rob. He won't go. He started. He started. The there he goes. It's Brown Bent by half a length. Hezekiah is second. Invincible is third. Wheelwright is fourth. Lancelot is fifth. And Skyrocket. Sure see this race. Oh, we got to find the bar first. I'd still like to see the race. Half to half. It's Brown Bess by a length, Hezekiah is second by three lengths, Invincible is third, Wheelwright is fourth, Lancelot is fifth, and Skyrocket. Hey, I just thought of something. What's that, Sheriff? That partner of yours belongs back in jail. Well, yonder he is. Go get him. Uh, right in Skyrocket. Come on, Skyrocket. Come on, Skyrocket. Come on, Skyrocket. On the back stretch. It's Brown Bess still leading by a length, Hezekiah is second by a head, Invincible is third by a length, Lancelot is fourth. And Skyrocket is waking up, but still last. Now he's passing Wheelwright. He's passing Lancelot. Round the far turn. Brown Bess is still in front. Hezekiah is second. And here comes Skyrocket, moving fast. He's passing Invincible. He's passing Hezekiah. Here he comes. He's challenging Brown Bess. It's Brown Bess and Skyrocket. They're neck and neck. It's Brown Bess and Skyrocket. Head and head. It's Brown Bess and Skyrocket. It's Brown Bess and Skyrocket. It's awful close, folks. It's awful close. I wonder who won that race. Skyrocket wins by a nose. I'm proud of you. Some might not hold him in a little too much as to finish. <laughs> well, you win it. That's the main thing. Abner Peabody, I arrest you for horse stealing, jail breaking, and hitchhiking on a fire engine. Come here, Sheriff. Oh, is that a fact? You got him locked up there now. Well, maybe. But just the same, you've got to go back to jail. Oh, Sheriff. You can't let them take Abner to jail. At least I'd like to brag about what a good loser you are. Sheriff. I'll be responsible for him. What was you? Oh, this little matter can be cleared up. Well, if you look at it that way, yeah. Squire. Well, good for you, Squire. Well, <laughs> I could hardly let him go back to jail, seeing he's got to be best man at a wedding tonight. Yeah. <laughs> what wedding? Oh. Did you have to remind me of that? <laughs> Now, 
Can't see a thing. Well, I reckon we better give it up for tonight. Yeah, uh, we'll get a fresh start in the morning. Yeah, you can see a fire a lot cleaner in the daylight. Uh-huh. Gathered here today to... Can't you skip part of this and get it over quick? You bet I can. Thank you, Judge. And if any man can show just cause why this couple should not be joined in wedlock, let him now speak or forever hold his peace. I object. now... Object. Yeah. What? I said I object. On what grounds do you interrupt this ceremony? Why, uh... Talking, I had some reason stood up a while ago. Uh, oh, he, he's too young to know his own mind. Objection overruled. Now, wait a minute. Are you tying a knot here, or is he doing the hitching? Uh, well, go ahead. You may proceed, Judge. Well, are there any other just causes? Well, I, I, I sort of object myself. You? Well, this is all very irregular, I must say. Don't pay any attention to them. Just go on with the wedding. I know. Just a minute, Judge. Am I too late? Oh, just in time, Sheriff. Joseph! <laughs> she can't marry long. There's her legal wedded husband right there. He run off and left her, and she's been telling it around that he's dead. Well, someone said he was. In view of this unfortunate circumstance, I think we can consider this uh, wedding uh, postponed. Postponed? I grant it, it's canceled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so saying, Sir Galahad, with a thrust of his lance, unhorsed his opponent. Wasn't he just wonderful? Yeah, I reckon so. Only thing, uh... It don't work out that way nowadays. But it just don't get no chance to be a hero. Oh, you're just too modest, Mr. Edwards. But of course, all heroes are. <laughs> do you really think so? Mm-hmm. But if you do, there's, there's something I want to ask you. Yes, Mr. Edwards? Well, you see, that is, I, I thought maybe, well, maybe me and you, Ten o'clock. Yes, ten o'clock. We're getting to be a couple of night owls, ain't we? Well, good night, Miss Geraldine. And good night, Sir Galahad. Uh, oh. <laughs> I'll be seeing you Wednesday night, I reckon. Oh, well, couldn't you come over on Saturday? We could... Trying to go through that closet door. I know it, I know it. I don't know what's the matter with me anyway. Oh, Mr. Edwards, what were you going to say just before 10 o'clock? Oh, why, I was going to ask. I, I don't recollect what it was right now. Maybe I can think of it by Wednesday night. Uh, good night, Miss Geraldine.